Have you ever wondered why your lines don't sound as cool, hip, or as interesting as your favorite jazz artist? I don't mean just guitar players either. I'm Adam Smale, and I'm going to show you how to take a half-decent sounding jazz line and apply concepts and techniques so we gradually make it more interesting, spicier and spicier each time. This first line isn't terrible. It has some interesting contours to it and some leaps in it to catch the ear a little, but it does sound kind of like the 1930s pre-bebop. We're going to want to add some more seasoning. In my opinion, that interesting zest comes from the bebop language, but we're also going to look at more modern approach later as well. Let's add some chromatic notes in the form of passing tones. We're going to step away from our original line for a moment and use a scalar idea. Remember, this is just one approach. You probably don't want to do this in your whole solo. Use it more judiciously, perhaps. But it is valid and worth exploring. You can spell out the chord with a scalar approach by having the chord tones fall on the down beats and the non-chord tones, including the passing tones, on the up beats. This way the line sounds very strong while the passing tones add some interest. <laughs> that idea going for two measures, and then I ended it with some descending diatonic arpeggios from the key of F moving down in fourths, except for that last one that has a B natural in it for a little more color. Let's go back to our original line and start adding that spice that I mentioned earlier. Place the first note, an octave, and targeted the ninth, which is an A, on the G minor 7 instead of the G, the root. It gives it more lift. I also added a flat 9 on the C7. Then we spruced up the F chord by adding some chromatic passing tones, an enclosure, and a bluesy note. You can always get some blues in your lines. <laughs> Let's keep going, so exciting. If you can do me a favor of hitting that like button for this video and sharing it on social media, it really helps my channel out more than anything. A big thanks. And hey, if you haven't yet, you can totally subscribe if you want. I won't mind. <laughs> added even more interesting things. Pickups are awesome ideas to add into your lines. I played an eighth note pickup to start the line off, then added a triplet, which is an important rhythm to play in a jazz swing feel. Next, we added the flat nine and the sharp nine on the C7 chord, which definitely adds some zing and grabs the ear. I also added a blues note and two interesting enclosures that help give it a bluesy feel, all the while creating a nice contour of interesting leaps and chromatic spice that we're aiming for. In the PDF below that you can download, not only will I include all the examples here, but I will have a section where you can print out and write your own lines over some 251 chord changes. Now, how cool is that? Mm -hmm. 
This time I added a pickup in the form of an enclosure, added a chromatic note to step down to another chromatic idea based on an altered scale sound, all nested within even a more interesting bit of 16th note triplets. I left in the blues note and the chromatic passing tone, but I added in an E minor 7 arpeggio broken up so I could land on the B note, which is the sharp 11. Now that is spicy. Notice another triplet at the end? Remember I said triplets are important. You can also play changes that aren't there. In this next example, even though everyone else might be playing the changes above, I'm thinking the changes written below. Because I'm staying very diatonic, it isn't going to sound mind-blowingly different, but it still gets you playing lines that you normally might not think of otherwise. Now for a modern twist. What we're using is an interval structure, using two intervals, up a perfect fourth, then up a major second, repeated over and over. It gives you a very jigsaw, angular, hip, modern sound. It's amazing what you can do with just two intervals. If you want more ideas on a modern sound, check out this video. I'll leave the link below. In this example, we're using a four note cell for both the G minor and the C7 measures. For the G minor, notes are G, A, B flat, D. For the C7, we're playing a C sharp minor cell, C sharp, D sharp, E, G sharp. That gives you an altered sound. For more information on this four note cell idea, you can learn much more about it by watching this video. It also has a great downloadable PDF. Remember in example six, we were thinking about playing chords that weren't written or played? I did that in the third measure. By thinking E7 flat nine sharp nine, we're delaying the resolution of the F major seven. Whether we think F diminished seven chord or an E7 flat nine or even E7 sharp nine, they can be thought of as being from the same scale, the F diminished scale. So now you know you can either write a song or improvise a line where you can play over a diminished seven chord of the same root as the one chord or a seven flat nine sharp nine a half step below to delay the resolution of the one chord. I also played that F diminished E7 idea double timed. Playing double time lines is yet another way of adding some punch in your lines. Wait, there's more great videos to check out here. I did it. God, first day. Now that is a spicy 